Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. I told you this is a special week, and I know one thing. You will never, never remain the same again. Praise God. Can we call for that daily bread before we go into the broadcast? Join me right now with faith in your heart, knowing that this is the only Wait, let me tell you something. When I tell you to say these things, don't think, I, I think differently concerning it. This is how I receive also. I make these demands as we are making it. I'm releasing my faith also. And let me tell you this. I'm not looking at any other source. I'm looking at him. Praise God. So set your heart on him right now as we declare. Say, Father, I receive today our daily bread it's coming to me right now in jesus name amen now i want you to think for a moment you know just close your eyes for a moment and what is that pressing need what is that pressing need that you need to sort out today what is it now shut your eyes and look at that need and now think of the daily supply that God can release to meet that need. I'm not saying think of, oh, who, who do I get money from? No, no, no. Just think of God, how big he is and how small this need is. And say, Father, I receive the bread to meet this particular need right now. In Jesus' name, amen. A miracle is happening already. And you are going to see. Now, when these things happen, don't just keep quiet. Open your mouth and testify about them. Because, see, when you testify, you are acknowledging that this thing came from God. That's what testimony means. You are testifying that this thing God said, that He daily loads us with benefits, is true. So, because he said that I believed it, see my, see what happened in my life. See that now? So the testimony is not just, oh, somebody gave me money and I was able to clear all my debt. No, that's not the testimony. The testimony is I woke up and I understood that God is my father and he meets my needs. The moment I understood that, I brought that request before him as a father and a son, praise God. And I brought it before him and he met it. He sent so and so person. He sent me to so and so person. He got a job for me. You know, you know what I'm saying? But he said it all began from the place of his testimony. This is how it works. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So we are talking about our eyes. Let's, let's go back to that scripture in Ephesians chapter 1. You know, I, I, I think I told you one time, I, I can preach for weeks and weeks on this verse. You know? Verse 18, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Now, let me read that from the Amplified Version. It says, the Amplified, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18. By having the eyes of your heart flooded with light. Not just light. He said flooded, flooded with light. Do you know what it means to flood a place with light? Some people haven't had their eyes flooded with light yet. They just have some light there. To flood a place with light. Have you seen a football field, a football pitch in the night? Now, that, now that, that's what they call floodlight. Because <laughs> it's not just one light that is there. It's 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 most most times you have like four poles, and each of those poles have sometimes up to twenty or more than twenty lights shining on that stadium on, on that pitch. And when they put it on at night, you don't tell the difference between night and day. Now that's what it means for when he says the eyes of your heart be flooded with light. He, he's not saying, oh, the light that I have. No, no. He's saying, let it be flooded. Meaning you see as day 
You see as day, nothing hidden. Now, now you, you, you are in that football. Ah, I think a football pitch, you know, is just the best because that's what you can relate with. You, you are watching that match. Everything is so clear to you. You are not saying, oh, I, I wish it was daytime. I would have seen that goal very well. No, you, you are seeing everything. The players there, they see everything clearly. The, the referee sees everything. He doesn't need some special kind of lens. He sees everything as, as long as he's, in that, he's on that pitch. That's what I mean. Flooded with lights. Flooded with lights. No single light missing. All the lights meant for that stadium. All of it on. Now he tells us that Jesus is that true light. So when he says the eyes of your heart flooded with light, he is talking about flooded. All all the life of Jesus, all the life of Jesus, everything Jesus ever did, taught, act, being, every, everything about Jesus, pouring out the light of it in the, into the eyes of your hearts, interpreting everything in your life by the life of Jesus. Now, that's what he's talking about. And, and you want to tell me that you have your heart flooded with this kind of light and there is one kind of darkness somewhere. What do I mean darkness? When you get to that point where you don't know what to do. And, and that's when you're really stranded. Now, sometimes you may have money, but you just don't know where to spend it. For example, you, you have money, but there's a medical condition and you don't just know which doctor to go to. Money's not the problem now. Light is the problem. You don't know. There might be a specialist somewhere that can handle that thing easily. But as long as you don't know him, you are in darkness where that thing is concerned. And listen, you, you better start practicing this life until you grow into it. And you get to that point where you know it, you know it that you can never be stranded. Never. Not because you can count the people you know. No, no, no. You get to that point where you just know you can, it's impossible for you to be stranded anywhere, any, for in any situation. It is just impossible. Why? Because there is someone who is with me and that one, if I listen to him, he will tell me exactly what to do and a miracle will happen. He will tell me what to do. Now, this is the confidence we have. I look at the future and this is my confidence in the future. The one I'm walking in, the one I'm walking with into that future. He will tell me what to do. So I don't stay here cracking my head about what am I going to do tomorrow? What am I going to do next year? What am I going to know? The, what, what I think most about is on the one who is with me today. Because see, when we get to tomorrow, he will tell me what to do the same way he is telling me what to do today. I don't sit here hoping he will tell me what to do tomorrow when I'm not even sure I'm in a relationship with him today. You see, it is the listening to him today and the workings of him, his instruction in me today that gives me the confidence that tomorrow he is still the same one who will tell me what to do. And because I'm listening to him today, I just know when he tells me what to do today, I will believe him, I will listen to to him and that will bring the change. Ah, thank you Holy Spirit. The eyes of your heart flooded flooded with light. Flooded with light. Is there anything think about it. Is there anything that God cannot do? Is there anything? Now, I'm, I'm sure you are quick to say nothing. Then, why that particular situation in your life, why is it difficult? It is not difficult because the power of God 
cannot reach it. It is difficult because your eyes have not received the light of it. That means there is still some deficiency in the light that you carry. Maybe you have set your eyes on some wrong things that are not light. You understand what I'm saying? And I told you on Monday, you, you can set your eyes on the wrong people. You can set your eyes. You know, sometimes you begin to tell yourself, you know, well, I'm not the first preacher to be sick. After all, also a preacher that was a great man of God was sick. You know what's happening to you now? You, you, you in that condition, instead of you to allow the life of Jesus to flood your eyes of your understanding with his light, you are now taking up a darkness from another person. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, so don't, never, never begin to reason. You know, you know sometimes we do those things like, well, I'm not the only broke person. After all, social person asked me for money yesterday. So I, I, I'm not, it's my case, it's not that bad. Hey, which light are you walking by? You know, even as students, you know, you're like, well, you know, you look at the result. Oh, you scored, um, you scored um, 40 over 100. Like, ah, oh, then you start checking. I see somebody that scored 30. Ah, okay. Thank God. Meanwhile, there's someone who scored 100. You don't want to look at that one and say, I feel, oh, this person is going to make me feel inadequate. You, so you want to look at someone who's called less than, ah, at least I tried. You're looking at the wrong lights. You're looking at the wrong light. Don't, don't make him the, 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 the thing that is going to help you. Now, when he says the eyes of your heart be flooded with light, you have a role to play by exposing yourself to the life. You know, sometimes I encourage people, sometimes you just take the words of Jesus Christ and begin to read them. Now, now sometimes you just take, you know, if you have the red letter edition of the Bible, you can start from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Just, just read only that which is written in red. Just read them in isolation first. Don't, don't, don't think of the story that brought about what he, the statement. Just take out that, that statement and you begin to look at it. You begin to look at it and you do this prayerfully. You know, sometimes you, you go on your knees and you study your Bible. You study it on your knees, not just a religious thing and the Bible is too holy. Let me kneel down and read it. No, you, 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 you put your heart in God and say, Lord, these things are written for my learning. I want to truly learn. I want to truly learn. So, you know, posture matters when you're learning. Teachers will tell you this. How you sit in class has a lot to do with how you understand what is being taught. There's a position that will create a lot of distractions for you. But there's a position that puts you in place of focus. So, it's important how you study the scriptures. It's important how you pray. It's important. So when you see us spending hours in prayers, it's not because we don't have work to do. You know what we're doing? We are allowing a light from Him to penetrate our being. And how do we do that? Because we are keeping our eyes on His life. I can never be broke. I can never, never, never be broke. Oh, Marie K. Broche. Let me tell you something. You know, the Lord was telling me this last week, Thursday, to be precise. Because I was fellowshipping with the Lord and he, he brought something to my attention. And he said, the reason, because it's been a question in my heart. And then the Lord began to explain some things to me. He said, the reasons you, you will never be broke is because he reminded me of an encounter I had with him. He said, you remember that time I visited you? When I left, I left the angels that came with me, with you. So their role in your life is to see to it that the things I taught you and you received and you're acting, the result of it never leaves you. I said, wow. Now, 
I understand. Now I understand. It's no longer a mystery to me. It's no longer a mystery to me. Brothers and sisters. But how did that encounter come? Because I was looking at his life. I was looking at his life. I was meditating on his life. This is, this is, this is what Jesus represents. If this is what Jesus represents, this is what I should be receiving from him. If this is what Jesus represents, then I don't want to receive anything less than what he represents. And it was in that questioning, questioning because I believed that the Lord visited me. And he began to explain these things to me and began to give me instructions. And I whoa, now I see. This thing is not anything. It has nothing to do with principles. Now I can come to there and say three principles of not being broke. But I will never lie to you. Principles will not do the job. It is when you meet him that the job will be done. Because now I can teach you the principles, but I cannot transfer the angels to you. Are you seeing that now? So you, 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 you believe the principles and you begin to practice them, but then it will work today, it will not work tomorrow. But me that you're looking at is constant. And then you begin to tell yourself sometimes like, hmm, I think something is wrong. Maybe this pastor did not tell us everything. Yes, this is the thing I didn't tell you, or this is the thing you didn't get. There are angels involved. And those angels, I didn't pray them down. It is the Lord when he visits you. But you see, he will visit you when your mind is fixed on his truth, meditating on his life. And I'm telling you this because my time is up now, but we're going to continue tomorrow. Praise God. I, I pray. Listen. Listen. If there is one desire you must have, is that the Lord visits you indeed. Oh, you will know when he comes. You will know. If you are waiting for him, you will know when he comes. Let that become your portion. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.